everybody and welcome. I'm Cindy Daycheck with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for checking in with us today. So today's video is all about lamps. And this is because I get a lot of questions from people about, gee, can you paint lamps? Um, you know, I'm looking to switch out my decor. My lamps don't really work anymore, but they were expensive or getting new lamps are expensive. Maybe I can just reuse my old ones. Do you ever paint them out? The answer is yes, I paint them all the time. I sell lamps in the shop. <laughs> They're popular. And I think for that same reason that it's maybe hard to find lamps that people like once they've got them, that they're the right size and the right shape. They don't want to let them go, but they switched out their decor. Those don't work anymore. You can bet, definitely zhuzh them up. So what I'm going to do today is, you can see the top of this one, is I have three different lamps, all that I have thrifted. Okay, so this guy, I, what, what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm grabbing three different lamps from the stash and there's still a number of lamps up there. <laughs> so I'm going to take three different lamps and I'm going to do three different finishes and not because necessarily this is the exact finish that you should use, but I hope that it gives you ideas about finishes that you could do that are going to work for your home and for your decor. So Gonna, gonna go different for each depending upon, depending upon the look. Now, this guy, I'm just kind of looking. So this is one and it's kind of angular. Now, here's the thing about shades. When you thrift them, um, they maybe have shades. Sometimes they don't have shades. Um, sometimes they're ugly shades. Sometimes they're nice. <sighs> you know what, it, it's a crapshoot. And the odds are that whoever buys this doesn't like the shade anyway, and they're gonna switch it out, which is the least expensive part of this. But if you're doing this in your home, you may have shades that don't work for you anymore. So just know whether I do it or not, you can paint this out. And I just did a thrift flip the other day with a dump find lamp um, that I painted the shade and I did a transfer on it. So not sure that that's going to work for any of these ones that I'm doing. Um, again, sometimes I just let it go with an ugly shade. I just put it in the shop with the ugly shade just because, um, it's not worth my time. It's not worth my time to fix the shade if they're going to throw it out. But if you're doing this for yourself, then it might make sense to be able to fix up the shade, do something with it. Um, or replace the shade. This shade, because it is angled, right? It's, it's narrow and then wide. This is actually a cool shade that you might want to do, um, take all the fabric off and just spray paint the wire. And then you put in like a little Edison light bulb, which is very soft. And so you have kind of the, um, it's called a skeleton shade for obvious reasons. It's just the bones of the shade, uh, but that would look really cute. Suits certain styles, usually when you have a much more intricate shade that has a lot of ribs in it and it's a unique shape. Um, but uh, again, not everybody likes those. So, you know, you just do what you're gonna do. So I have this guy, which has got some interesting details. I have this guy, which again has some, some carvings here. And really there's nothing wrong with this uh, apart from um, these, these guys. I think there's one that's, you know, they're all unglued and, and flipping off and who knows what it's gonna look like. But I think that we could do something kind of cool with this and maybe going in a, in a different direction color-wise. You know, just to show you. And then we have this big guy. So he's got the feathery beaded kind of shade, which means I'm not gonna mess with that shade, um, but it's got some lovely details. And uh, so we're, we're gonna do different treatment. I feel like I'm wearing a hat now. We're gonna do different treatments on each, but today is all about saving the lamps in your home 
or how to be able to take some lamps and be able to flip them for your booth. First up is this guy. And we're gonna be, we're gonna be treating the finial the same. It's all taped up. Um, oh, I'm just gonna leave the tape on there because the first thing that I wanna do is I'm actually gonna take this outside and I'm going to spray paint it. So I'm gonna get this sprayed down because I want to start with a base of black and spraying it is the fastest, easiest way. We're gonna do some painting, hand painting afterward. Um, but just to, just to give you a heads up, usually when I am spray painting, I will do what this is. I will tape this off so that I'm not spraying up into the workings. And I will tape off the base of the cord. I'll just turn that just so that I am not getting um, paint all, all over the cord, right? I mean, obviously it's gonna be functional, but then it's just not gonna look right. And um, so for a resale perspective, I don't wanna have this all covered in paint. It's not gonna look good for their home. So I tape off the first couple of inches that might get some of my overspray. Right, so this one I'm gonna spray paint black and first, and don't forget the finial. So we're gonna get spot for, shade, for the shades. So we're gonna get this one done in black to start. And then I gotta think about what I'm doing with the other. Okay, this one, this one has that big fancy shade on it. So. I've got all kinds of clips still on it. So it's got the big fancy shade on it, which I'm gonna be leaving and I'm not gonna do anything with just because, um, just because. <laughs> just leaving that shade. So I'm doing something that kind of coordinates with it. People could keep the shade if they like the, the, the frills and decorations on it. And this has got some lovely detail um, but we're gonna do it sort of soft. So rather than gold, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of this, we're gonna do some distressing. So usually when I'm doing a lot of distressing, my preference is to use, rather than using an all-in-one paint, my preference is to use the DIY clay base paint that I sell because I'm, I have so many details and what this means for this piece, and this is crinoline, so you can see it's a beautiful cream. I'm gonna be doing two coats of this to get nice, even coverage. And then we'll be able to do some wet distressing on this. The water will reactivate the clay base paint so that we can get just a light contrast with these um, antiqued gold tones, right? So we're gonna be able to highlight some of this and just, it's gonna make it just a little bit more quietly elegant. And um, so she can be very quietly elegant, a very classy lady with a very fancy hat. Maybe she's going somewhere special. So I'm gonna get two coats of paint on this one before we um, carry on. And for our third one, get this finial off it. So for this third one, um, we're gonna start with a base of old 57 from DIY. Just because, um, you know what? Sometimes I think it's fun to show you how we can start with a super bold color and still make this be something that works and ways to be able to add subtle accents. So if this is like an accent in your room, this is a way to bring it into your lamp, right? Okay, why not, right? Sometimes you just have to have fun. And this is me having fun, pulling a little bit of color, but we'll, we'll sedate it down. <laughs> 
<laughs> whatever. So I just wanted to show you quickly as well for finials. I just usually insert a skewer or a stick or I've got extra paint brushes. And uh, this is our cream one over here and I just have them sitting over in, on a cup so that they stay suspended and that they, they all get painted as well. So this one, we're just gonna do a couple of coats of, just defuzz the bottom here. Oh, price tag, there we go. Um, so, well, this one's only gonna need one coat really because it's very thick. So we're just gonna get this painted out. Look at that color, okay. I'm not scared, so hopefully you're not scared. It's gonna be beauty. Now that our black spray paint has dried, it's time for us to do our paint coatings on this. So I have Vintage Linen by DIY, so clay-based paint, and I am going to cover this in the white. And again, especially with the white, this is going to take two coats. So I'm gonna get this one with two coats. Everything else is gonna have two coats. And then we'll come back and start doing the finishing of these. This one has all of its turquoise on it. We are going to paint over this, but I wanted to stress back to that blue. I wanna have that contrast. So what I am going to do is I am going to paint over it. I'm gonna seal it all with Big Top. Big Top is DIY's polyacrylic top coat. So I'm going to seal this all up, leave it to dry so that tomorrow I can paint my next coat over top of it. What this will do is it will serve as a barrier. When I go to distress, I'm gonna wet distress this piece. So when I wet distress it, I don't wanna go back through it to that um, kind of brown base, because I'm actually gonna paint this brown. I want to have um, this blue to contrast. So this way, I won't be inadvertently activating my, my blue paint. When I wet distress the brown, because this will protect it. Okay, now that this is all dry, what we wanna do is paint it its final color, which is going to be Layered Chocolate by DIY. I have a new container here. It looks just like melted chocolate, it's so lovely. So with this, I'm gonna be giving this two coats. So I'll paint this out, let it dry, and add a second coat. You can see that this first coat is just a little streaky. So we'll add our second coat, let it dry, and then we'll be ready to carry on with this one. For this big lamp, what, we're, what we need to do next is we need to wet distress. Now you could dry, dry distress, dry sand if you choose. I just like, the control that I have with the wet distressing a little bit better. So I'm using baby wipes. You could just use a wet cloth. That's really all that we're using a baby wipe for. And I am just slowly going back and with my wet cloth, I am reactivating that DIY paint and wiping it away. And that's one of the beauties of that DIY paint is that because it hasn't been sealed, so up until it's sealed, it's still active. And you can add more paint to it, you can blend with it, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Makes it super easy to do some wet distressing with it. And for once, I'm not adding extra dust to the workshop, which is wonderful. Because when I dry, dry distress, dry sand anything, it goes everywhere. So I am going to carry on and I'm going to do this to all of the details all over this piece. And while I'm at it, 
I am going to do the same to this one. I'm going to wet distress it, and I'm gonna be fairly strategic with it. This is the one that we put that black coating underneath. So this one, we're distressing back to that aged gold. So it's gonna be golden cream. This one, we're distressing back to the black. And I want that black to show, which is kind of why I put it there. Um, but I don't want it to be too crazy harsh. And these have got thick lines. So rather than doing the whole line, I'm doing the sides of each of those big lines. And it's just gonna be, it's gonna be a slightly softer look than if I just distressed the full black. But again, if you wanted a more dramatic look to it, then do the thick full line on it. And you're gonna have these beautiful stripes. And then I will distress around these details as well. So all of these edgings, I will do some distressing as well. So I'm gonna be distressing both of these guys. I've got my chocolate paint first coat drying. I need a second coat on that before we can distress that one. And uh, I will probably wait for that so then I can seal all of them all at the same time. Now it's time for the chocolate one. So again, super easy, but this is going to bring out all of those turquoise details. And here, because it's got the raised scroll work, that's what I want to bring out. I don't want to get to the body of it. I just want to get that contrast. Because you know what? Sometimes you just got to do a funky one. We did sedate and, you know, a little bit regal. We did a country. Now we got to do one that's just a little bit bolder. And look at the contrast of that old 57 against that layered chocolate look. Okay, loving that. All right, so I got a little bit of work to do at getting this all cleared off. Um, it's a little bit pickier because I, I wanna be sure where I'm distressing, but it's not hard. So I'm gonna get moving on this. And again, Bear in mind, when you're just wet distressing, you're re-wetting the paint. So before you go to seal it, you need to let that paint dry. I'm gonna be sealing these with wax because I love, I love sealing things with wax. So I'm just gonna use DIY clear wax um, and I'll get those, those done and drying so that I can get them buffed. But then we'll, uh, We'll come back. So I have to get all this done so that I can get this one drying before I seal it. But look at that contrast. So lovely, right? Okay, time to address shades. I'm gonna leave the other big brown one because I think it'll, it'll work. It'll still look good with um, our other piece. This one though, I'm gonna snip off these little pieces that are starting to flop and float. And I think with a good dusting, this one will be okay. So I'm gonna, okay, you don't need to see me snip. I'm gonna finish snipping that. And then we'll use that one on our chocolate. This one, this is the shade from the lamp that we painted white. I don't like this color on it. I looked, I don't have any other shades. And um, I don't want to go looking. So, so I'm going to paint it. Um, and again, people tend to so here's for your booth. People tend to buy lamps with shades, 
even though typically they end up replacing the shades. I don't have an explanation for that beyond it helps them be able to envision it. Um, so it doesn't matter to me if they end up keeping the shade or not. It's just to give them an idea of what it would look like. Now, I will post a link to another video that I just did maybe a week or two ago, depending upon when you're seeing this, um, where I painted a shade out and I applied a transfer. That same technique would work for this. And I'm using the same paint. I'm using um, Cottage Colors in white linen by DIY. It's an all-in-one paint. You could use the all-in-one paint of your choice. I just like doing them in all-in-one because then they're done. And I like as well to make sure that as I'm doing it, I kind of paint with the grain so that any brush marks that show up on the fabric just look like fabric marks. It just looks like linen. And I just get a little bit of the trim, make sure that I'm getting up in there. This actually is painting out really nicely. The trim, um, not as much. <laughs> the trim is gonna need definitely a second coat. It's a different fabric and it's a, it's a different fabric and it's absorbing the paint differently. But you can see already that that is going to fit our lamp a little bit better without going to the time and expense of finding an alternate shade. This is kind of just a perfect shape for that lamp, but it's a little too old and tired and it's the wrong color for it now. So flipping out the color with this paint is the better way to go. Certainly from a booth or a shop perspective and especially from the perspective of what I would normally charge for a lamp. I'm not, you know, charging like $120 for my lamps. So anywhere that I can save a little bit on that expense is the better option so that they still stay really affordable for my customers um, without me reducing my profit margin by a horrendous amount because shades alone can be super expensive. And it's fine, you can th thrift shades. Do you all see that big blob happening? Okay, so what's gonna happen there because that is just, that's fabric bleed through. Um, I'm gonna have to uh, finish painting this, let it dry, and we're gonna have to cover that big blotch, which didn't show on the other fabric, but was obviously there. And uh, we're gonna have to use a stain blocker on that. And then repaint. So everything, all of this is gonna get a second coat after all. Let's take a look at our finished lamps. You know, this is, this is a great way, just, you know, if you're, if you're looking at your home decor, you're switching it out to save yourself some money. Rather than having to go buy all new lamps, you can easily change them out to be able to fit your decor. And I tried to give you a couple of different ideas. Um, so let's lift them up one by one. This is our little brown lamp. And what I wanted to show you was the, the way that you can create a an entirely different look by contrasting some different colors, right? So here, it's predominantly brown, really fairly neutral, until you get to that turquoise. You see us doing a lot of, of gold and copper. I mean, copper would have looked great on this, but it's gonna give you a totally different look and feel. Nothing wrong with it, right? Um, but I wanted to give you an alternative because I had a bunch of raised scroll work, painting it the turquoise, sealing that off so that we could distress back to it. Awesome, it's a great look. Now, I took off the edging that was already starting to come off. I cleaned up the lampshade and um, it's in great shape. So no need to be able to change that out. If you were doing this for yourself and you really wanted to go a little bit crazy, I mean, certainly could you 
um, painted design in turquoise on the shade? Yes. Could you stamp a design or stencil something on? Absolutely, right? Just the more that you do to that though, um, it decreases the appeal to a broader audience. And if you are in the resale market, you're gonna own it a lot longer. Doesn't mean it won't sell, just means it's gonna take a little bit longer to find the right buyer. Our little white one, you can see that we don't have that stain on the shade anymore. So the trick to this one, um, because it would have looked weird with that um, beige shade, and really the shade looks almost brand new now. This easily could have taken like a black and white um, transfer onto it from IOD, which I did. I'm gonna drop the video in on the last thrift flip video that I did. I did a shade like that. I didn't wanna repeat it. And so I kept this pretty, pretty simple, pretty basic. But you can see that this kind of fits into that country look right away. And the magic for this one with that bleed through was um, gave it that one paint coat. We started to see very distinct bleed through coming in. I left it overnight, came back. It was pretty much all cream again. <laughs> so we had that one big stain that I showed you and then the rest started to bleed through. I sprayed the whole thing with a spray shellac. Shellac is the best stain sealer, period. You just don't ever wanna use it as a top coat because it will yellow. So painting it again after that shellac had dried with that same white, um, right, the white linen from DIY, got a nice, clean, pristine look to this one. Let's just move you over there so we can still sorta of see ya. There we go. Um, now, the other one is this big guy in behind. Oh, Lord, he's a heavy one. Um, maybe she, because look how beautiful she is. That gold detailing just coming softly through that cream. That lampshade actually works. It's got the cream finial on the, t on the top. The shape of the lampshade is perfect for this, so I kept it. And really, going into the, the brown um, kind of fits it. Again, easily you could change this out. I mean, you could pull off all this, this trim and simply paint the shade if you wanted to go into something a little bit more neutral. Um, you could just replace it. I always think of this looking like a hat, but you know, she's a little taller, she's a little fancier, and I don't think that, um, I don't think that the shade looks bad because it's got the golden tones a little bit like she does. But if you're going into something much more in the, the cream tones, you might wanna change out the shade. I leave it for the customer. They can do what they want. Um, you're never going to appeal to all of them. They're all gonna wanna change something. So you know what, give them something to change out and uh, then they definitely feel like it's theirs. This turned out beautiful with the cream against the really soft gold that was there. It's not as bold, it's a little bit more elegant looking. Really like how that turned out. I hope this gave you some ideas and some different ways of thinking about some of your decor, whether uh, pieces that you are finding and thrifting, know that I tested all of these with a light bulb before I started painting. So I don't like to have anything that I waste my time on that ends up not working. I'd rather find out and make sure it works before I do that. But uh, I don't think I'd mentioned that. So test it all before you put your time and effort into it or any of your materials into it. But gives you an idea of how you can change out looks entirely by just adding a little bit of paint, maybe building some color underneath first, as we did with these two, using the existing color and just changing the finishing color out. Cool makeovers. Hope it gave you some ideas, different ways of looking at your decor or thrifted decor if you're going that route. And uh, let me know which one is your favorite in the comments. Apart from that, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care. Yeah.